And, and people, people are excited uh, about this clash that we're about to have. And, and uh, John Suba on our YouTube chat thread says, this is about to be a great promo. So let's draw the lines in the sand right now. I have the clock. You guys know where I am. D-Max clock. We're just about halfway home in the 34-game the stretch that I need. I needed us to tank this season, quote-unquote tank. And again, I always feel like I have to qualify this stick. You're pro win every single game you can. Correct. I'm pro the second you can't make the playoffs, it doesn't make sense to win games. I didn't make the system. That's just the way the system is. And for me, I'm about draft capital. I'm about the most assets you can have, which is logic, which makes fundamental sense. Explain yourself, Stick. How can you sit there and think that the Lions are better off when they win games? How? Well, if we're going to logic, right, if we want right. to use that as the basis of this argument. Math. Isn't winning helping you become no. a better team at all costs? No. So you think losing helps you become a better team? The second you can't make the playoffs, the second you're mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, yes. See, and I think where we need to draw the line in this argument is you're strictly talking about draft capital. I'm talking about team culture and team building. And, you know, one of the things that I always like to point to is the last dance, the Michael Jordan documentary. When he got to Chicago, they wanted him to tank. They didn't want to be the eighth seed. They wanted more picks to surround him with. But what does that winner mentality have? No. We're going to go into the playoffs. Even if we're getting our face kicked in this first time, guess what? We're getting playoff experience that we can use next year, which to me is more valuable than moving up five spots in the draft. So yes, there is some argument. I, I will agree, draft capital is important, but not only is winning important for your culture and your team and for people to learn how to win, I could also use the argument that draft capital isn't guaranteed. Winning is. When you win, you've won. It's on the records. It's in the books. But it does nothing for you. It doesn't. It doesn't help you get to the playoffs. It, it does. doesn't do any of that. It does. No, it does. If it's you there. go back to the Bad Boy Pistons, they had to learn to win. Right? They had to make it right, through. Right, but stick. Other... They were good at the time. No, they weren't. Yeah, they had Isaiah Thomas, pound for pound, the best player uh, in the NBA. Okay, and what what position was he drafted at? He was, what was he, number three overall? So he wasn't the number one. They didn't have to tank to get that number one overall. Well, they had to be, they they stick, they had to be some, monumentally bad. I, I, listen, I understand that as well, but they didn't have to tank. Like I'm sure at that time someone was like, gosh darn it, they're they're mathematically eliminated. Why aren't they trying to tank to get that number one pick? We well, need that the number was, one that, pick. You know what, no, Stick, that was a different time, though, too, because now you're talking about apples and oranges because then the contract situation was different. Then it wasn't you know this, this huge... Huge, this huge advantage to have a rookie contract like it is in the NFL. Okay. Uh, like you look at Patrick Mahomes next year, going to make what, $40 million? I think the number is something like that. You look at a quarterback that's on a rookie contract, Patrick Mahomes this year, making $7.5 million. How can you tell me that's not an advantage, man? The, the, that is an advantage. Um, Thank you. I want to go. Yeah, that's fine. See, I, I will have logical conversations with you because I think in the end you'll understand why my logic will win out. Let's take it back to the 04 Pistons. Actually, let's go back three years before that, two years before that, when it's John Barry, Chucky Atkins, and those guys. You know what pick pushed that team over the top? The Tayshawn Prince pick. That was number 22. So they were going into the playoffs. They were building a team, but we were still getting swept out of the first round by the Nets. But they learned from those situations and were able to carry that over into the next year. It didn't matter that they had the number three pick. No, they it mattered that they had Joe Dumars as a GM that, that fleeced that fleeced teams in trades, namely Michael Jordan and the Wizards with Rip Hamilton, that fleeced Rasheed <laughs> Wallace away. That That's what helped them. Again, that was a, a little bit of a different... I mean, that was more along the, the modern-day times because that was as we got into the LeBron Jameses and the Darkos and, and things like that. Uh, that was when it started to change, I think. But that was that was a GM that was greater than all the other GMs that were in the league. And I'm, I'm glad we agree that Joe Dumars was a great GM. It, so it, many hurt, people it hurts trash my heart. It, it, it hurts happened. my heart. It hurts my heart the way that Joe Dumars is perceived in this town. You're talking about a dude, three championships, two right. as a player, one as a GM, that recess you know helped resuscitate the franchise. Now, obviously, Isaiah Thomas got all that emotion, but Joe Dumars was a great soldier. Did everything that was asked of him. Spent his whole career here. As a player, won the two titles. Then as a GM, took us from the teal uniforms back to an NBA championship. I don't bleed teal. And you know what, Stick? He got a person, a living 
breathing NBA player and a draft pick for Mateen Cleaves. He should be <laughs> he should be put in the general manager Hall of Fame for he got John Barry for Mateen Cleaves. And John Barry's a hell of a player. Yeah. I love John Barry. He was a part of the alternators. Remember that? Like th- those guys were coming off the bench lighting it up. But that's why I, I don't fully believe that tanking is good because I believe the residual effect from winning and learning how to win is so much better. Look at Jacksonville this year. Last year they had the number one overall pick. They got their guy, Trevor Lawrence. And guess what they're going to be this year? The number one overall pick. Right, because they there's no core, worse. stick. It's it's empty. It's like this Lions roster that that and I would contend this Lions roster is even worse because of the Trey Flowers contract. Oh, yeah. All the cleanup you have to do. And and I've been talking about this for a couple weeks now where this season is the season of the draft pick, right? Because of the injuries on the offensive line, everything that they've gone through. This offensive line for the Lions is too good to be this bad for the team to be this bad again next year. So this is this is your opportunity to strike. Stick. That's that's where I was with it. And I, again, I, let me qualify that because there are a few misguided souls that are saying, "Hey, I stand with Stick." The, the majority, oh, the smart are, the, people, the, the logical, majority are riding the, the with me. The logical people. No, the majority are riding with me, and and they know where I stand with this. Next year will be the cleanup where you take the scissors because you need to cut it. You have to. You got to bring it out there. The Trey Flowers of the world, all that type of stuff. This year's the draft pick. Next year's the cap space. Twenty twenty three. After game number 34 of this expedition, then we roll. Then we roll. Then then, then we're, at, we're at the stick level where now we do need to win some games. And now even if you're going to get, you know, if you're going to come up just short of making the playoffs or whatever, that's different stick. My thing right here with this core that the Lions have is, and I felt this way about the Red Wings, uh, I like what Troy Weaver has done with the Pistons roster just in he has advanced their flexibility. Now it's different. The NBA is different than the NFL, which is different than Major League Baseball. Right. I, I would say the NHL and the NFL are are probably the most comparable to each other, in that you're going to build your team through the draft, like AC says here. Uh, he also says I'm with Neil. Being a middle of the pack team accomplishes nothing. John Suba says hashtag stand with Neil. You build the team through the draft. Uh, Greg People says Stick is right about this. Yeah, Greg, but Greg is wrong. Greg about is it. a man of the people. <laughs> he, <laughs> he knows. Know, he, is. he knows. He is, and, and that's where I am. But look, we're so let's let's. All that aside, let's just go to the fact that we can. I also go to the argument of it doesn't matter where you pick, it's who you pick. And to me, that is always going to be the trump card to any draft capital argument because, great, I had the number one pick in the NFL. I drafted Jamarcus Russell. What did that do for me? Absolutely well, but nothing. But that's your GM, though. That's on your GM. And we can agree, I think, the early returns on Brad Holmes is that cat's built different. Listen, I, I trust Brad Holmes with everything. I do, I do and, implicitly. And, and I'm with you. I want to give him as many bullets as we can for him to shoot his gun. And the best bullets. But at the same time, like, I don't know how to say this without sounding like a stupid hippie, uh, but I believe in fate. And I believe things work out the way they're supposed to be. See, I believe in math and analytics, and you have a better chance of getting a good player with the number two pick than you do the number six pick. That, oh, so Jamar Chase came out this year, not a good pick at number six. Well, I, obviously he was a good he was a good pick. Yeah, you can give me better one ex- Zach, one exception I, I, no, to the rule. You, I'm giving you the most recent example, uh-huh. which was this year. Right. So it's not like I got to go back what, fifty what about, years. Yeah. To what find about this what stuff? about like Calvin Johnson's and Matt Stafford's and Indomitian Sue's? And that's just the Lions. Stafford was the right pick at, at the number one. That's spot. just the Lions. Well, Calvin Johnson was a number two pick. You how know about what I'm Jeff saying? Okuda at number three? Because people were saying we needed to take Again, that year to get a, up into that top three. That's a compromised GM. That's different. That that's so, a guy trying to save his job. So and you're all that not kind arguing draft capital. Now you're arguing GM status. No, I'm arguing what I give a good GM to work with. That's but, what I'm arguing. But we're arguing across the board draft capital. Is it good or is it bad? Not particular GM. Because if that's the case, well then yeah, draft capital really doesn't matter if you have a good GM. You know what can't be argued, man. MyBookie.ag is the place for you. But Stick and I are hashing this out like adults. I think it's, I think it's fairly civil so far. I so mean, far, so far it's pretty <laughs> civil. We're not we're not done yet. Uh, Clomp sauce on our YouTube chat thread. Round two, fight. Uh, <laughs> Let's so, do yeah. it. <laughs> oh, Yoshi! No, we're uh, <laughs> we're, we're we're definitely uh, well, we're definitely doing it here though. Talking about draft capital and Stick is a man of emotion and heart, and that's admirable. Certainly in these these. Uh, 
times that we're living. Yeah, these times <laughs> that we're living in right now. I'm analytical. I'm mathematical. And the second you can, you know what, Stick, you're the kind of guy I like to play at the poker table. Yeah, because you're gonna have. You know, eight ten suited, eight ten of spades, and you're gonna say, "Well, maybe that flush will drop. I'll stay in," and I'm full. I'm folding that hand every single time, and over the long run, stick, I'm gonna come out on top. You know with what? It. I'm glad you have that impression of me because then next time we do play poker, I know how to use your brain against you. No, absolutely, <laughs> uh, Greg Peoples. Again, we we had the top picks for years. We were still trash. We need this team to learn how to win. Thank Greg, you. All right, okay. Thank well, culture, Greg, baby. Greg and Stick was Matt Stafford trash. No, Stafford was great. Okay, was uh, Calvin Johnson trash? No, Calvin was great. Was Indomitian Sue trash? No, Indomitian Sue was great. Top three picks. The problem's how not was, that pick. How was, um, I mean, we could play this game too. How was Baker Mayfield at number one overall? He won a role playoff game. And that's what you want out of your number one overall pick? Yeah, I, I, I would like to, okay. I would start with win a playoff game. Well, how about game? the guy drafted three that year? Two spots behind him, Sam Darnold. Right. No, no I, great. I, yeah, I'm so glad I lost for Sam Darnold. Well, I bet, I bet they wish they had the number one pick instead of the number three pick that year. Well, I don't year, think huh? it makes that much of a difference. Well, How about and, the number two pick the year prior to game. that? The Chicago Bears trading up, getting that draft capital, using it, and getting Mitch Trubisky. No, 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 no. Mitch Trubisky. No, oh, no, now no, it's going to no, be the no, GM's no, no. fault, no, not they the draft tra- They traded up. Yeah. That's on the GM. But they used draft capital to do that. Yeah, and who they trade with. I don't remember. Don't remember. I, I just remember the number two Those, pick. Those, the, the people they traded with. The number two pick The people they Mitch traded Trubisky. with got draft capital. That That's what I'm saying, Fish. And AC kind of backs up my point. He says, those teams you're talking about already had a core. And, th- and that's my point. And Joey two times said, I'd argue Rashid Wallace put that core? team over the top. You don't get a core by through continuously the losing. No, you, 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 you do in theory because you get it through the draft. That's the way, certainly in the NFL, that's the way it works. Even in the middle of the draft, capital isn't everything. I'll give you an example. Who would you rather have, Aaron Darnold or Eric Ebron? Well, it's funny because I, I used to oh. die on that hill too. No, I'll give, you, I'll give you some perspective on that story. Oh, okay. I love perspective. We're, we're... You've reached the end of the video. You know what you should do? Press like. You know you like the content that we have here at Wilbur Sports Network. I'm Braylon Networks from the bottom line. Subscribe to us right now.